day seven. Well, do you like me yet? Okay, listen, I'm going to grow on you, okay? I'm telling you that God has a plan, and it's not just for your life because your best is not in you. Your best is in a team. Your best is in a family. Your best is in the family of God. We work together. And if you're born again, I'm born again, the Bible says we have fellowship with one another as long as we both walk in the light. That's what 1 John says. If you walk in the light and I walk in the light, then we should have fellowship with one another. Have you ever had an opportunity to you know, be distanced from someone that you knew well and that you enjoyed the company of, and you come back together even years later, and it's just like you never were apart? That's that instant fellowship. That's that koinonia in the spirit. You know, you, you're, you're together. You're not separated. There's nothing between you. But have you ever had a dissimilar experience that you're, you know, you're fine with someone and you're separate from them even for a day, a week, you know, or, 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 you know, and you come back together and all of a sudden, you know, there's something between you. You can't put your finger on it. You don't know what it is. Darkness. Someone has broken fellowship with God. Because the Bible says in 1 John that our fellowship is not with one another, but our fellowship is through Christ. And as long as we walk in the light, then our fellowship is through Christ. We have fellowship with one another. It's important that we maintain step number seven. Okay? And that's what we're going to add to our lives today. We see it with God and we see it with Joseph. Step number seven is Character. Character is who you are when no one else is watching. Character, what you do when no one else is watching. Character, what you say when you really believe that no one else is going to hear you and no one else is going to find out. You see, there is a principle in God's Word that says what you compromise to keep, you will lose. You know, if we compromise our life, if we compromise our integrity, if we compromise our character, then if we're not watchful, it will cost us. You see, sin will cost you more than you expected to pay. It will take you farther down the road than you expected to go. Okay? It's, it's unreasonable for us to be a person with no integrity, not trustworthy, a liar, a cheater, someone who is you know, compromising our life with adultery, you know, with lying, all the things that the devil tries to trick us into and tempts us with, telling us no one's going to know about it. Oh, come on now. No one's going to know. Or perhaps, you know, you don't care if anyone knows. This is just the way you are. Character is very important. It was important to Joseph and his success, even though sometimes it looks like it can cost us, yet it actually makes us in the eyes of God. And God is the only one that we need to impress. We're not here to impress anybody else, just God. We also see God as a God of character. You know, God does not love us and forgive us and do good to us because He has to. You know, He's not kind because He has to be. It's because he chooses to be. The things that God did for Adam and Eve and the things he continues to do all throughout the Word of God are things that he chooses to do because he is a God of character. He's dependable. We don't see Jesus going around in the New Testament telling lies. We don't see him, you know, talking behind people's back. We don't see him, you know, uh, doing all those things that would be, you know, uh, taking things that didn't belong to him. Jesus was honest. He was a man of integrity, a man of truthfulness. You know, he was responsible with his words, and so should we be. Joseph was a man of character. You know, Joseph had been done wrong, and sometimes when people are done wrong, they think they can do wrong, but two wrongs don't make a right, especially in God's eyes, but also in no one else's eyes. You know, one of my life principles is what you say will be said. Another one, what you do will be found out. Number three, what you compromise to keep, you will lose. Number four, what you believe will be tested. You know, uh, these are life principles. And it's important to realize 
that Joseph shows us one of his life principles, character. Let's read about it. Genesis chapter 39, verse number 9. You can read verse 7 and 8. In fact, you know, read this life of Joseph. It's amazing. In verse 7, Joseph is in the house of his master, and his master's wife comes to him. And Potiphar's wife says, Gosh, you know, you're a good-looking man. The Bible says she had longing eyes for him. And she said, come and lie with me. Come and have sex with me. You know, come on. I mean, nobody's going to know. The master's not here. Come on, you know. He evidently was a good-looking man, and he had power and prestige and, you know, trusted. And, and uh, you know, uh, so she said, come and lie with me. And, and Joseph said, you know, uh, my master, he trusts me. He trusts me with everything he has. I mean, there's nobody like me. In verse 9, it says, there is no one greater in this house than I am, Joseph said. And my master has kept nothing back from me in all that he has except for you because you are his wife. And then Joseph reveals his character. He said, how then can I do this great wickedness? How can I sin against God? You know, many times we don't connect our actions even though we may know they're wrong, lying, cheating, stealing, you know, uh, adultery, you know, um, you know the, the, the things that we say about people, uh, murdering their character, we don't count them as sins against God, but they are. David said in Psalms 51, when talking about how he had acted towards his friend and how he had acted toward his friend's wife, he said this, against you and you only have I sinned, God. We need to recognize that God is the one that said don't. And therefore, when we do, we are going against God. We need to check our character. Our, our character. Is your character for sale? If so, how much? How much would you sell your character for? How much would you cheat for? How much would you lie for? Well, many times it's just for a few hundred dollars each April the 15th when people fill out their income tax return. Sometimes it's a matter of going to a salad bar and not paying for it and eating over, off of someone else's plate. These little things seem small, but it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. We need to have character. We need to have some principles in our life. Not that we're, you know, old sticks in the mud. Not that we're, you know, judging other people. Let, let other people do what they do. But as for me and my house, we're going to make sure that we're not sinning against God by just allowing our character, our words, our thoughts, our actions run amok. We need to make sure we don't compromise our character before God. And that's the step I offer you today. Check yourself, challenge yourself, and change yourself. You can, you know, be participating and being presenting yourself well. And, you know, you can be following all these wonderful things, but yet be a liar, a cheat, a thief. And it can keep you from being successful, not only at your workplace, but also at your home. Those close to you, they know you. Let's, again, participate with this Overcomer's Confession. Do this with me. Through Jesus, my Lord, I am more than a conqueror. I have the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. My spiritual eyes are being opened so that I can understand my calling, the wealth of my inheritance, and the kingdom power available to me. I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. No unclean or impure thought can captivate my mind. No sickness or disease has a right to my body. No unholy spirit can seduce or deceive me. The Word of God is my meditation and my answer. I commit myself to God. He causes my thoughts to become agreeable with His thoughts. Because of this, everything I put my hand to will prosper. God has a plan for my life. He will succeed and I am going to participate. And I'm going to participate with my character intact. Don't be for sale, especially for a few measly dollars. Okay. God bless you. I love you. Okay. Steps one through seven, rehearse them and take them in Jesus' name.